Russell City. Not a name that many know, but for those who remember the town, it was a place where the measure of success was not calculated by money in the bank, but by the love for one another. Those who lived there remember a children's librarian who had students over to her home for cookies and milk, families who shared the bounty of their backyard gardens and orchards. During the 1950s and 60s, the homes, the churches, and stores of Russell City were bought up by the city of Hayward through eminent domain proceedings. The families were scattered to other towns in the region. Since 1978, former residents come together at an annual reunion picnic. They spend the afternoon in a park remembering the community that they shared. This film is about the memories and friendships that endure. Today we have carnitas with rice and beans, and we have uh, barbecue chicken, potato salad, macaroni salad, a green salad. So I think we're set. The Holman family, Margaret Holman, Rita Holman, Liz Holman, Robert Holman. I know Liz. Old memory. Go, go, going through Memory Hill right here. A lot of people say Russell City and they don't even know what that is. They don't know where it was at or anything about it really. Um, and a place where we could just record our history for this area because especially out here people of color uh, we don't we don't seem like you know we don't have any we don't have anything established yet so that's what we're kind of working toward now a few of these people got together and uh i'm gonna say about 1970 somewhere in there jane 65 or 70 after it was down maybe about five years later and the first couple of two, three was a massive turnout. A lot of people turned out because it just it was still fresh in people's mind. And as the years went by, uh, the Dukes Club, it, it's a club in Oakland, and I guess they belonged to it, these six or seven people that got it going. And again, they didn't know what they were starting. They thought they were just a picnic for the few families. It turned out that, they, you know, it's history now what they started there. The Duke Swoopman Club taking over to start having a this Russell City reunion. Well, it first started out with me and uh, Ruby Tofrey Whale. It started out after her husband passed, and we were sitting down talking, and we were talking about we never got a chance to see anybody from Russell City until we come to funerals and things. And so that's how it got started. We, me and her, just called people that we knew the first year. And then the second year, the Duke Sportsman Club taking over, and we just started having an annual picnic to feed the old people then. But people got to enjoy it so much that we just started feeding everybody. And uh, I forgot how many years we did it, but it was quite a few years. And then after then, the Sam Nova taking over, because we was all burnt out, and so he taking over and he started sponsoring it. About, what, 23 or 24 years that the Duke Sportsman Club sponsored it. All the people that used to have it got a little bit, you know, older and they felt like maybe some of the younger people should take over and I think that's when Sam took over. You know, so we've been doing it ever since. The reason the crowds have dropped down because a lot of the people now are older and a lot of them have passed on, sorry to say. So basically, if that town was basically shut down in 64. You almost have to be like 40 years old just to say you live there. So you can see some of the younger people is just because they go because their parents or grandparents lived there, not because they were there. So it don't really carry the same thing as actually saying you were there. And these people that go here, this is where they belong. And I, and I appreciate what they do. And, the time they take off to go spend with us out there. That's what makes them, makes this whole thing, not us, but the people. The city may be gone, but our memories live on. Yeah. I was born in 1954. They're raised in, on Adams Street. And I lived in Stone Alley with Robert Stone. He's deceased now. Yeah. Everyone 
when I was four. My daughter was the last child born. Well, I came when I was five years old. Angie, how are you? I was five years old. We all got along very well in Russell City. There was a diverse race that out there, but everybody got along because it was such a compact little place. I was born in 1936 and until 1952. And I graduated from Russell City School, the eighth grade. Yeah, we moved there in 1944. I didn't go to school. School in Russell City, but my, my brothers and sisters did, and went on to Haywood High. I grew up in what, in uh, probably the, the 50s. I was there. I, I, went to, I went to Russell School, the grammar school, from kindergarten to high school. My name is Ernesto R. Nava. I came from New Mexico. Aquí a, a, no a Razón City exactamente, pero yo vine a California en el 1936. Uh, there, uh, from 40, uh, 5, up until 63. Oh, it wasn't. I lived there. But I enjoyed it because I was just growing up as a teenager. And I enjoyed it out there. We had to go to Haywood to go to the movies and different things like that. Or go to Oakland, you know, but we didn't have nothing like that out there. But it was just, just like I said, we just enjoyed each other. We just all got along out there and it was very, it was a very nice place to live. It's a camaraderie there that exists amongst the people. People don't greet themselves, if, if you've been there, and people don't greet themselves with handshakes or, or nothing like that. People actually end up, they hug each other like brothers and sisters, and they know where they're all from. The, the family, the people over there, were, it was a community of their own. They were all happy, they were all worked together. You could go into their house and take a glass of milk and walk out. You didn't tear the door down when you went out. And they were, uh, they were just, just all good people. No, nobody had anything, so nobody wanted anything. Everybody was in there, helping one another when we first started uh, in Russell City. No, it was a good place to grow up. Everybody took care of everybody. I, I really believe that was holy land out there. Anybody that was raised out there had it for the good. Mm -hmm. There was always people around. It was more like a family type environment. Everybody kind of knew everybody. And you know, it's been good because we've kept in contact with some of the families, some of the families that were originally there. Mm -hmm. you know, somebody dies, everybody's there for each other. We see each other on different kind of you know, um, activities. We'd all get together. I mean, you'd have uh, you know a party. Say kids were having a party. Everybody, you know, it wasn't you know I'm only going to invite them and that's it. You know, we were all friends. That's how we grew up. I've always been proud of my roots because I know it wasn't easy for all the people that were there. Uh, they're all humble. Um, we get together now, like Bonita says, at the reunion, and and it's just the memories and some of the people that I could tell you stories about them. My graduating class, or eighth grade graduating class, which was about 30 of us, I would say about four, four or five of the boys never made it to high school. They just had to go to work and got married, which wasn't unusual at the time. Now it would be unusual. And the girls, I would say two, three, never went to high school. I look at the yearbook and I think there's only like seven or eight of us that graduated from high school out of the 30 that started. So college, it, it's not like it is today where you have JCs where you can go to and, and have a chance. In that era, it was either Stanford or Cal and, or San Jose State. So that was just like, like a dream. But 
it, it won't cross nobody's mind. I mean, the money wasn't there. Every, all the money was used just to survive. Grew everything, you know, tomatoes, onions, radishes, and cucumbers, and, you know, peas, and corn, everything. We had chickens, pigs, and rabbits. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course we'd grow them to, you know, that was going to be our food. Yeah. <laughs> and just to see lawns and people's houses, we didn't know what a lawn was. Yeah. We didn't know what a shower was. And I'm not alone. This is most of the people out there. And most of the people were poor. Proud people, but poor. And like I said earlier, most of them didn't have a trade. They had car batteries and they would charge all the batteries and then they take them back and that's how they had the electricity. They had no, no bathrooms and uh, no sewer system. It was a town that was below sea level. There were, there were uh, uh, dams, dikes uh, around it. And looking at it from a medical standpoint, uh, there was no no sewage system and no no uh, water system. They had a lot of kind of clapboard houses there, and they had a few fairly good ones. Our house, there was nine kids, and it was only a two-bedroom house. And my parents took up one of the bedrooms. So that gives you an idea. We were about eight, <laughs> eight of us in one bedroom. It was probably ten by ten. And uh, where nowadays everybody wants their own rooms. We were in there <laughs> like sardines. We had a seven room house. And uh, we, we had a, 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 a lovely time in Russell City. It was really a home for us because everybody was just like one big family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we had a good time. Up until the time for us to move out and when they came and said that they was taking over Russell City then uh, we had to get our you know, those two and two and move on out. And then we moved to Hayward. I hated it. Why? I, wish. I just wasn't the same. Now I no longer have gardens or raise chickens or, or have animals. You know, it was just too, too city. I was raised country, you know. I don't have any bad memories of Russell, except when Hayward took it. I'm sure a lot of people know the history of Russell City, but you know, in the 60s, uh, people were forced out of that area because the city wanted the, the area back, and so um, people suffered a lot of tragedies. Uh, you know, they were forced out of their homes. Uh, churches were forced out, either through intimidation or they were burned down, that type of thing. So our church actually burned down. Allí en ese lugar nos quemaron las casas a todos, y no supimos ni quién las quemó. Y es decir que a toda esa gente se salió, no porque le pagaron, casi realmente cuando sal, se salían de su casa, hallaban la casa quemada. Y esa fue la razón que se salieron todos de los Una pobrecita gente que no tenía nada casi en absoluto ni qué comer, le quemaron sus casas también. Los bomberos nunca llegaron a tiempo de que una casa estuviera quemando. Ya cuando llegaban, ya estaban quemadas. It's been a, an experience for us. And I never knew that, that this uh, reunion we have and, and, and the people still showing an interest in it was ever going to come to that. I, th I always thought that once it went down, that was it. Nobody would ever remember it again. I thought it was history then. I wish sometimes I'd have taken more pictures, but who, who was to know it was going to become something here 50 years later that people would still be, you know, yeah. talking about that city. The way I describe Russell City, it was like a six block, six square block area. The streets that went north and south were paved, but they weren't very wide. You could barely make it through with two cars. And the streets crossing it, which went by one, two, three, and four, and five, whatever. They, uh, they were dirt roads. Those, when it rained, everybody gets stuck in the mud. We had the yard right next to Russell City, the 15 acres right next to Russell City. 
and the next to, to my yard was the Turk Island dumps. And on the other side of the street was the garbage headquarters, mm -hmm. next, across from Turk Island dumps. And right across the street was me for Santucci Hog Farm. I think it was great. Uh, the hog ranch that was right nearby we used to go over and ride the pigs all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I did that one time. Mm -hmm. But God, the smell. My mother wouldn't let me in the house. The smell of the, of the hog ranch. Mm -hmm. The dairy, we were riding Russell City. The bulls in the back, I remember going to her backyard looking over the fence. There were bulls and my older brother and sister used to scare me and tell me if I wore my red skirt, they were going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> the dairy for one, the hog ranch, junkyard browns. Had all the junk and everybody had junk. They either sold it to junkyard browns. Or either they bought some from Junkyard Brown. My grandfather, he traded with, with Junkyard Brown. Whatever he had he didn't want, he sold it to Junkyard Brown. So he was the guy that to uh, all the junk you didn't want, he bought it. <laughs> and every Sunday, we'd have a whole lot of people come down. They just come down on Sunday and they'd look, you know, it was, uh, we were open Sundays, incidentally. And we were open every day. But, uh, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. It wasn't like it is today, let's put it that way. I used to attend church in Russell City as a young girl. And my grandfather and my grandmother, the O'Neills, and they were very active in the uh, First Baptist Church of Russell City. You knew on Sunday you got up, especially as the Catholics. We'd get up on Sunday. We knew. We would just automatically start getting ready for church. You know, and the whole family would go. I mean, that was just something we did. See, I believe everybody that lived there really loved Russell City. When you're living there, you really don't know that later on in life you wish you'd have taken more pictures of, which I regret. And I can say, okay, this is the streets, this is the way it looked, because it's kind of hard to explain, because the people there were poor, and that's basically what drew a lot of people there. And after the Russell City went down and, and, and it became history, I just didn't, never appreciated the era that I lived in. Now I look back and I can't even explain to somebody and take them to a town and say, this is the way it was where we grew up. There's just no places around. But I've always been proud of it. And everywhere I go, and I'm never ashamed to say that I'm from Russell City. Always proud of it. And proud of the people that that, that came through there and and, and we still get together for that reason.